Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome home and welcome back to my series looking at Salient OS, a Linux distribution that is targeted primarily at gamers, multimedia enthusiasts, and content creators. If you haven't seen part one in this series yet, I took a look at Salient OS in a virtual machine and kind of checked out the abundance of software that's installed. So if you need to catch up, check out part one, which is right up there. This time around, however, it is installed to the metal on that machine right there, the new Kubuntu Focus laptop. And if you guys have been watching my community tab, I asked you what games I should try out on Salient OS. And uh, Diago, you asked for Doom on Vulcan. You're going to get it. Uh, let's see. Gilkasis King, you asked for Quake Champions, a free-to-play game on Steam. And I gave that a shot as well. I played around a bit with native Linux gaming, with Steam Proton Gaming, as well as Lutris using the Epic Game Store and the Blizzard Launcher. All right, enough intro for me. Let's just get into what you care about, and that's the games. <laughs> Now, all the games tested in this video are being played on the new Kubuntu Focus laptop. That's a hybrid graphics laptop, which comes with a 6-core, 12-thread, 10th generation Intel i7, and an NVIDIA RTX 2060. So not top-of-the-line GeForce graphics, but very, very good. And uh, everything is being tested at 1080p on high or ultra. And I think it makes a lot of sense to start with some native gaming. So I fired up Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which has been recently ported by Feral Interactive. And oh my god, it's just absolutely butter smooth. And keep in mind also that all of the footage here is being captured on the same laptop with OBS Studio using the NV Ink Encoder at pretty high quality settings. So the actual frame rates you're going to see on this combination of hardware should be just a little bit higher. And now we're looking at Dirt 4, a game that should be classified in the horror genre because it's terrifying. Ever since I started playing the uh, the Colin McRae series and then onto the Dirt series, this game, I mean, if you don't know the track like the back of your hand, every turn is absolutely terrifying. And but it's but it's so thrilling to play. And this one is so smooth, and the graphics are not bleeding edge beautiful but they definitely suffice considering that everything is you know passing you by so fast this was also ported by feral interactive and i was able to lock down at least 55 to 70 fps no matter what kind of discipline i was doing and uh, the graphics here are set to ultra my skill level however is set to terrible now we're gonna move into a category of games that really shouldn't even be running on Linux, except for the fact that there are geniuses at places like Code Weavers and Valve and uh, the developers over at Lutris who have been working miracles. A few of you asked to see Doom running on Vulkan and here it is with all of the graphics settings maxed out and even while recording the gameplay with OBS Studio, it is ridiculously smooth and very, very responsive to play. It really makes me wish that every single title was created using the Vulkan API because it is brilliant. Another game that has a decent track record running on Steam Proton is Halo The Master Chief Collection. Halo Reach didn't work out of the box on Linux when it first launched. For a few weeks there, you had to use one of Glorious Egg Roll's custom Proton variants but now all those fixes are in the mainline Proton version, and I'm happy to tell you that both Reach and the newly released Halo Combat Evolved remake, which is part of the whole collection, works brilliantly. Now, I know that we might think of Microsoft as evil, some of us, but they did something here that I think needs to be applauded. They actually implemented a non-easy anti-cheat version that you can launch, which lets you play the entire single player campaign, lets you play with mods, and lets you do custom, but not matchmaking, multiplayer. And this, this has to be said, and this is my personal opinion, but man, the gunplay in the original Halo still feels so tight and so fun. Double kill. Things can get a little more frustrating with certain titles on Steam Proton, and one of those is Quake Champions. You guys asked me to check this out, and, and man, it took so long for those shaders to compile. 
Now, your video is not frozen right now. This is just what it looked like the very first time I booted it up with Salient OS on this machine. Now look on the top left of your screen and you'll see Mango HUD. And if you look at all those green spikes, that is the frame time going way, way up where the game is stuttering. And that's the effect of the, uh, the shader compiling. So it, it basically becomes completely unplayable on a competitive level. But if you spend, uh, for me it was about 20 to 30 minutes going through various maps, you will end up getting a pretty playable version of Quake Champions as this clip shows. And speaking of dying a lot, which I did in Quake Champions, and also this game, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is a stealth action game that I actually checked out for the first time for this video, and I love it. I used to play Tenshu back in the day, and this really kind of scratched that itch, even though it's got a bit of a learning curve for me because I'm of a certain age and I don't have quite the twitch reflexes that I used to. At any rate, it runs quite well. I did not have any problems with performance, and right out of the gate, it just ran really, really smoothly. From Software is a brilliant Japanese game developer, so let's shift to another brilliant Japanese game developer, and that is Platinum Games. I loved the crap out of Vanquish, and I really, really had a blast with uh, Transformers Devastation, but I never played the original Bayonetta, and I thought this video would be a good opportunity to pick that up and give it a spin with Steam Proton as well. And as you can see, my, uh, my lack of combo skills aside, it looks really, really good, and uh, no performance hiccups during my time with it. My next stop on the Salient OS tour was to check out Lutris, which also comes pre-installed. And I decided to give the Epic Games Launcher a go and uh, download a few games from there and see how those performed. Because Wine Staging is already here, the first time you fire up Salient OS, it turns out this is pretty painless. Those of you who follow me on Twitter know that I'm rather obsessed with Magic the Gathering Arena, but I've had a bit of a roller coaster ride playing it directly through Lutris. So instead, I installed it through Epic Games Launcher. And this is interesting because what I've noticed with Lutris is that it has a difficult time whenever the client has an update. But the Epic Games Launcher, running via Lutris, has no issues updating the Magic the Gathering Arena client, so that's now my go-to platform to get my magic fix. Alright, so back to reborn old-school arena shooters. While my experience with Quake Champions on Steam Proton forced me to, to play some very frustrating matches where I was just getting obliterated because the frame rates would, would just bounce all over the place. Unreal Tournament on Epic Games, ridiculously responsive, lightning fast, gorgeous, and just a blast to play right out of the box. No tweaking necessary, at least in my experience, on Salient OS. And, you know, I heard about this game being developed kind of as a, a joint effort between Epic Games and the community, and I had checked it out way in the early days when it was first announced, and I don't know what the development progress has been over the past year or so, but I had a lot of fun with this. So if you haven't checked in with Unreal Tournament, it might be worth uh, revisiting it if you're a fan of arena shooters. World War Z, though, that was my last stop on the Epic Games via Lutris tour, and uh, it gave me the same type of problems that Quake Champions did with Steam Proton. I actually had to run this benchmark that you're seeing right now about four times before it would exhibit anything remotely resembling a smooth frame rate, and the same applies for the levels in the multiplayer matches as well. I had to run through this map about three or four times before the stuttering got to uh, <laughs> tolerable levels. Now, is it unplayable? No, but again, you're going to have to spend a good chunk of time uh, just kind of forcing yourself through the gameplay and, and suffering through that, that horrible stuttering just so that it can get all the shaders compiled and, and you can have a, a decent experience there. 
And to close out my little salient OS gaming spree here, I had to install the Blizzard launcher, and I did that via Lutris as well. I did not, however, install any of the prerequisites that Lutris lists. If you've gone through the Blizzard launcher install process on Lutris before, you may have noticed that that top installation script links you out to a wiki page that has a bunch of kind of prerequisites and dependencies that they suggest you install to have a good experience with Battle.net. I did not play anything other than Overwatch, but I definitely had a great time with Overwatch. No complications with installing it, and compiling the shaders took almost no time at all. And within about three or four minutes, I was into my first match, and it was running really, really smoothly. It might have been as recently as six to nine months ago when people were advising that you play each character and play each map and, and you know, really go through that whole process like you have to with uh, with games like Quake Champions to, to get a smooth experience. And that definitely was not the case for me in my situation with my hardware on Salient OS. So then, what is the verdict? I would say that my verdict is evolving, much like Salient OS itself. It wasn't all high frame rates and glorious gaming. Uh, there were some rough spots. For example, Far Cry New Dawn. I got it to install and launch, but there was a lot of shimmering and textures that, that just weren't loading properly. And when I tried older Proton versions, then Steam complained that the Uplay store wasn't even installed. So, you know, not all perfect, but that's, I think, more indicative of the overall gaming experience on Linux and not, not something we can point a finger at to Salient OS about. For me, it's about the ease of use. It's about the fact that, that someone who might be a little bit intimidated by Arch Linux can install this and have so much out of the box that they might need for for gaming or for content creation or photography or you know some light video editing things like that and on the development side of things i've been in the salient os discord channel and silent robot is very active in there he's constantly helping people taking suggestions and updating the ISOs pretty frequently. But I really want to hear about your experience with Salient OS, so leave me your feedback in the comments, and if you're really interested in it, think about joining the uh, the Salient OS Discord and give Silent Robot some feedback directly. A quick bit of housekeeping before I get out of here. Make sure to click over to the Make It Linux YouTube channel. You saw the teaser for the gaming video at the front of this video, and the full version is coming very, very soon within the next few days. And if if you'd like to support what I'm doing here on the Linux for Everyone channel, please consider becoming a patron. There are $2 and $5 tiers that have some cool benefits, and everyone who's a patron gets to participate in a monthly patron-only live chat. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, until we chat again, take care and take care of each other.